Paula, and I work at the Institute of Geophysics, Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, I am particularly excited about today's lesson because uh, it's a topic I find really fascinating. Sami people, their origins, their culture, their way of life is a really extraordinary story, and I hope to share some of this passion with you today. So uh, let's begin with where we are. Actually, it's Sapmi, because Sami people are traditionally known in English as Laps or Laplanders, are an indigenous Finno Ugric people inhabiting the Arctic area of Sapmi. Uh, today, it's, uh, these are part of four countries of far northern Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia, uh, to be more exact, Kola Peninsula in Russia. And Sami are the only indigenous people in Scandinavia that are recognized uh, as a minority and protected under the international convention of uh, indigenous people. So they're the, most north, the northernmost indigenous people of Europe. Uh, as for the name, like I said, traditionally they were known as Laps or Laplanders, but Lap means no good because it means a patch of clothes for, for mending, for mending old clothes. That's, the name suggested that the Sami are wearing old patched clothes. This is a derogatory term and this should be uh, should be replaced by uh, by Sam. So, uh, like I said, for countries, uh, the largest Sami community uh, people identifying themselves are, are Sami live in Norway, up to forty thousand uh, people, and the smallest one is in Russia, about two thousand people. They live in tundra of Arctic or, or subarctic treeless plain, in taiga, in coastal zones, and in general, Sami territory lies at latitudes above 62 degrees north. Much of it is above the Arctic Circle, with dark, cold winters and warm, light summers, and it is often called the land of the midnight. So how about their origins? Where did they come from? Well, the genetic origin of Sami people is a very complex uh, matter and quite difficult uh, to trace. In general, uh, Sami people represent old Asian European uh, population. Possibly uh, they were the first ones who re-entered Europe uh, from Ice Age, Age Refugia after the last glacier uh, maximum. And their beginnings are closely linked with the origin of uh, Finns. And since, uh, since the very early years, years of genetic research, Sami people were causing much interest of, uh, of scientists because of the unique gene pool. And this unique gene pool made Sami people one of the most um, extensively studied genetic population uh, in the world. And even though they speak, like I said, a finno ugric language, they are genetically very much distinct from other finno ugric uh, Indo-European uh, people. Some suggested that they, they might be of Asian or Siberian uh, origin, but the frequency of blood groups uh, in Sami differs significantly from the general Northern European uh, population. What in more recent years, uh, we have a new tool in genetic, uh, in genetic studies, the use of mitochondrial DNA, empty DNA. This is mitochondrium and this is empty DNA, uh, which gives us more opportunity for uh, clarification of the origin of Sami and other uh, indigenous groups. Actually, it's a very interesting topic on its own, how scientists trace human origins through mitochondrial uh, DNA. What is mitochondrial DNA? This is, it is passed from a mother to her children. Fathers cannot pass their mitochondrial DNA, only extra genetic information. And because it only comes from the mother, uh, it doesn't change very much, if at all it changes, from one generation to another generation. 
mutations occur, but they're not very often. Uh, therefore, a person, for example, my DNA, a mitochondrial DNA, is probably identical to that of my uh, maternal ancestor, my grand, 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 grandmother, thousands of generations ago. And this can be used to connect people across across decades, across uh, uh, centuries. So uh, some scientists believe, uh, according to those studies, that Sami uh, became mixed with Germanic tribes years ago, or, or even that the Vikings are descendants of uh, the Sami. But what, is, uh, what all they also said is said that Sami people have always lived peacefully, unlike Vikings and uh, have never been involved in any war, which is quite unusual for any, for any nation. Uh, so, uh, Sami appear to have a complex uh, population uh, history, but um, it's, uh, it's quite uh, unique that uh, Sami did not intermarry. That, that means that they not, did, did not mix uh, much with other surrounding ethnic groups. They remained isolated uh, for, a, uh, for a long time, so they remain genetically, uh, they remain quite homogeneous. Here are some main points uh, of uh, Sami history. Uh, the first races nearly, uh, are nearly 10,000 years old, the first races are their present in the Arctic. Um, up to uh, 16th century, they were mainly fishermen and trappers, um, usually a combination of those two. They were living a nomadic life, uh, which was ruled by migration of uh, uh, rangers. Then there was excessive hunting, and also they had to pay uh, taxes uh, to, to Norway, to Sweden, to Russia, and number of rangers started to decrease, so that uh, then they had to settle. They had to settle along the fjords, uh, on the coast, the uh, coast in the in the inland. A small minority of the Sami started to um, tame reindeer and uh, became becoming the well-known reindeer no nomads. So uh, although they are often portrayed uh, by outsiders uh, as following the archetypical Sami lifestyle, only. Uh, the reindeer, reindeer tamer, reindeer husbandry represents only around 10% of uh, Sami uh, people. What else? Like I said, they are very, very peaceful, but uh, as you can see, there was uh, some violent, uh, violent event. Oh, uh, earlier, of course, there, there is a period of persecution. Um, they, were, um, they were chased, they were persecuted. Uh, they weren't allowed to cultivate their religion, their beliefs, uh, their holy sites, holy objects were destroyed. Uh, and this was a, this is actually quite characteristic for uh, any uh, colonization. And then there is a revolt in Kautokeino. Uh, Kautokeino uprising in 19th century uh, took place in Kautokeino, of course. This is a town in northern Norway. Uh, a group of Sami uh, attacked uh, representatives of uh, Norwegian uh, authorities. Uh, the rebels killed a local merchant and uh, a local priest, burned down some uh, houses. They were then seized by other Sami. Uh, two leaders were executed uh, by the Norwegian government. They were actually decapitated publicly. Uh, but also, uh, following this event, many innocent Sami men, women, children were prosecuted and imprisoned for a year. So this is a, quite a traumatic event for, for Sami nation. Um, then there's, uh, uh, there's segregation. Uh, there, there's a period of race segregation, uh, especially in, in Sweden. No, too, too fast. Uh, like I said, a, a, a period of oppression and discrimination. Sami people in Scandinavia have, have experienced a long story of discrimination, of oppression, of neglect, uh, of ridicule. They were deprived of, the, on the, of their land. Uh, first, they were isolated, treated like a 
kind of worse category of people, like children were forbidden to attend schools, even not that long ago, because in early 20th century. Then they were forced to assimilate, to abandon their beliefs, to abandon their culture and way, their way of life. So traditional cultural language and in singing was uh, forbidden. Only lately it uh, begins to change. Uh, so language. Language is, uh, as you may know, uh, one of the most important threats and characteristics bringing the community together and allowing to pass tradition and culture from generation to generation. And uh, Sami language is uh, more or less Samagila. And um, in fact, it's not one language. It has nine distinct dialects uh, and it is spoken by around 25,000 people all together. And the largest language, Samagila, uh, is spoken by northern Sami people, which is this area here on the map. It is the most popular. It is spoken by about two thirds of all uh, of all Sami uh, Sami people. And uh, there are other dial dial uh, dialects. Uh, for example, one that is particularly interesting is Ter Sami, Sami uh, which is almost extinct. Uh, it was spoken only by two elderly people in 2010. That means uh, it is highly endangered. Uh, if, if it's spoken, still spoken uh, at all. And the, the interesting thing is that the first uh, known documentation, a short vocabulary of Sami, was, uh, was of Ter Sami, was of this now extinct language, prepared, it was um, created in 16th century by a British uh, explorer. Um, Sami language is very rich, uh, very melodic. And for example, it has 300 expressions for uh, snow and ice, which is quite uh, natural regarding the, the environment they, they usually uh, live in. And, but what is always quite characteristic for uh, indigenous people to avoid humiliation, to give their children better chances in life, uh, minority parents um, often decide to speak a dominant or official language with their children with their children, Norwegian, Swedish, Russian, etc. And Sami parents uh, are no exception to this rule, and especially in the past. Now it is uh, changing. And here are a short uh, Sami Gela uh, vocabulary, so just for uh, you uh, to try how to say hello, Burez, how are you, Moddat <laughs> Mana. I'm not, I do not speak uh, Sami, unfortunately, but like I said, I find it really, uh, really melodic, so you can also uh, try and learn some basic expression like, thank you, gitu, or please, lega bore. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, language to, to start. So, uh, language is one thing, but uh, people have to do something for a living. How about what they, what they uh, do for a living? Uh, around 2,600 Sami people in Norway uh, work in uh, herding uh, reindeer industry, we might say, if we can call it an industry. And um, traditionally, they used to uh, they used to work in fishing, uh, livestock farming, farming. The, also the, the hunting of the coast in the fjords, but today, of course, a large proportion of Sami people live outside in a traditional Sami areas, have moved into towns, northern Norway, Oslo area, and uh, they earn their living in modern service sector, industry, travel, and public sector, so they are not only reindeer people. But if they are uh, if their occupation is reindeer herding, uh, reindeer is a central part of life, of life of a family, and reindeers actually come first. Uh, when the spring comes, the herds are separated based on which reindeer is pregnant. The males and non-pregnant reindeers 
travel 200 kilometers to their summer summer grounds, and herders uh, go with them. Go with them, mostly traveling with uh, with uh, snow bikes, snow uh, snowmobiles. And then there's a very important uh, time of calf marking in June, and another major event, major part of the year, when the calves, uh, new calves, newborn calves are earmarked with each owner's individual sign. I'll talk about it a bit uh, later. And there is always a herder with a uh, reindeer, even in the, in the depths uh, of, of winter. At least it was like that in the past. Uh, so um, herders were following the reindeer, uh, pushing them. The, the reindeers are following the rhythm of nature, and they follow uh, the, the reindeer. The reindeer. Um, some herders call their work Boazovaldi, which is translated as a reindeer walker. This is exactly what the herders did in the, the past, following the animals on foot, on wooden skis, and uh, in search for the best grazing ground. And uh, what is important that coming back to the language, uh, the reindeer, according to Sami, if reindeer herding disappears completely, Sami traditions may vanish too. And the language itself reflects how powerful this bond is, because the word for herd is alu. And the word for life is realin. That means that uh, life is uh, very much linked to the herd, to the reindeer herd. Uh, also, they use uh, help in the herding. Um, during their herding, they, they uh, use help of dogs. And the, mostly they're Finnish lapsons. And this is a Finnish lapson, so it's not a husky that you might, uh, or, or malamut. <laughs> Uh, that you might uh, imagine. Malamutes are actually from um, Alaska, of course. So, uh, reindeers have been herded for centuries, as you can see, uh, for meat, for meat, for uh, for hides, also for milk and transport and transportation, but for uh, to less uh, extent. Reindeers are not considered fully domesticated. They generally run free and are just follow, followed by herders. Uh, in the 60s, the Sami reindeer herders started to introduce new technologies. Uh, there, it was a so-called snowmobile revolution in their work with uh, reindeer. Later, there were new me mechanical aids and new tools uh, of making reindeer herding um, more modern. But this had a lot of impact on reindeer husbandry uh, because uh, now herders no longer ski or walk with uh, reindeer. So the relationship between herder and reindeer has already changed a lot. Uh, today, uh, reindeer herding requires large areas. Uh, reindeers are often frightened uh, also by snowmobiles and uh, from their from their natural natural flights in pastures natural grazing uh, grounds also they're not fully watched year round and uh, wander freely during during certain uh, certain periods earmarking like i said um, each summer in june uh, Sami reindeer herders of northern Scandinavia need to mark somehow their newborn uh, calves. Like I said, reindeers uh, roam free uh, partly, and uh, herders need to identify which uh, reindeer belongs to whom. And um, it is made using the ancient marks of the family. Um, it, it allows to recognize uh, the herd while uh, reindeers graze. Uh, as you, here you can see uh, officially recognized uh, marks and um, earmarks, and each mark has a name. Each, har each uh, mark has a unique set of cuts. It's not very painful to, to, to the young reindeer, to the cow. So, uh, reindeer earmark is a combination of, of cuts. Uh, around two, 20 different are. Uh, 
cuts are approved, um, and not, but not uh, it's quite difficult to have a cut a, approved. Only those who have, who have a right to a reindeer earmark can conduct reindeer husbandry. Uh, and the right to reindeer uh, earmark requires that a person is a Sami and uh, themselves and parents or their grandparents uh, have reindeer herding as their primary occupation. So, so not everyone is allowed to do earmarking and do uh, reindeer herding. Uh, like I said, reindeers are uh, and were headed uh, for food, for meat, um, and reindeers have been a strong symbol of Sami for hundreds of years and remain an integral base of their uh, diet. And traditionally, the cuisine of uh, Sami people is based on local materials. Fish, like you see here, dried fish or smoked fish, uh, reindeer, here is dried uh, meat, and berries. Berries are a very important food because uh, other kinds of vegetables are not or were not available during the winter. Uh, so uh, it was, uh, they had to somehow eat some vitamins uh, as, as well. So we have meat dishes like smoked, uh, smoked salmon, which is um, quite, uh, it's nothing unusual to us, but also there is, uh, as for bread, there is gakko, soft flat bread, bre baked in a frying pan on a, on a flat stone, but there are also more, let's say, exotic uh, more, uh, foods like uh, kams. Kams is chunks of uh, reindeer blood, curdled reindeer blood which is added um, to reindeer soup uh, for extra flavoring and also has some, uh, some vitamins and uh, it's very good for, for health, even though it may not mean, uh, sound so, uh, so delicious. Also, also there's slaba. Slaba is blood, uh, blood pancakes. And the reindeer fat, you can see here on the left, uh, has a very high content of nutrients and it also has a very rich flavor. And uh, in Sami cuisine, it is considered a culinary, uh, culinary goal. Also, uh, like I said, there are uh, fishers, but uh, also there are hunters. They hunted uh, birds like Sarmigan. Sarmigan is the most widely hunted bird uh, for food. Uh, you can see here uh, on the right. Another important aspect of every culture, every community is uh, religion. Um, Sami traditional religion is nature-based. It had elements of animism and uh, shamanism. Uh, it is, was polytheistic, tot totemic, uh, and uh, sacrificial, that uh, means that uh, there were sacrifices uh, to, to go. Uh, animism is manifested in Sami belief that all significant objects like animals, plants, but even rocks like here, possess a soul. And uh, in fact, according to the tradition, they have only, those rocks and animals, they have only recently lost the power of speech, but they are able to hear, to understand, so people must treat them well, as if they were humans, they were living uh, as um, feeling uh, beings. And uh, from a poetistic uh, perspective, traditional Sami beliefs include lots of spirits. So as you can see, uh, Sami religion is very much uh, connected to, to nature and this is uh, manifested in Sami uh, relation with, with nature and the great respect to nature. Uh, shamanism. Now, so the man and nature are, uh, are one. Um, and various rituals, uh, shaman rituals, have to maintain the relationship between man's inner world and the world 
surrounding him on the level of individual person on also on level of, uh, of the whole community and here you could see those those rocks are actually sacred uh, Sami rocks and deities gods there is a whole and not very well known Sami mythology that is so rich that can be easily compared to Greek or Roman ancient mythology. Very rich, very picturesque, uh, full of gods, full of uh, stories. Uh, you wouldn't have time to uh, tell them all, but um, there are goddesses, Akkas, and gods, Atie. And uh, they're very, very interesting. Like uh, there's a god uh, of the winds, uh, very much like Poseidon and Neptune. There's also a giant hammer thunder god, a bit like Thor. Uh, control storms, grasp a rainbow in one hand and a bow that is throwing lightning in other uh, hand. Which is uh, the one I find particularly interesting is and this is Northern Lights. This is Aurora. Aurora is also a, a god, uh, and uh, which, which surprised me is Northern Lights is a god who will punish those who fail to appreciate their uh, beauty, the beauty of uh, Aurora. Well, of course, Christianity uh, is also present there since the 16th century, but first churches were present in the area since 11th century. Um, even though it, uh, Christianity was present there, the Sami practiced their traditional religion openly uh, in the beginning. And there was one man who had a major influence on on the religious practice practice of Sami, and he is here on the photo. He was a priest, Lars Levi Lestedius. He lived in 19th century, and he it is said that he completely changed the destiny of uh, Sami people. And Sami would probably perished in 19th century. Why? And it is also quite common uh, in a relationship be between uh, indigenous people and those uh, to, who come uh, to the same certain area. The liquor, alcohol trade, uh, was pushing Sami society towards disaster, financial disaster and social disaster. Uh, because tradesmen were selling uh, or even giving away alcohol to, to obtain the lower price, prices on reindeer skins, etc. They were using Sami, the same people. And uh, Lestedius observed that during church services, almost all men, many women, were half drunk. And it irritated uh, Lars Levi Lestedius, who saw how badly children were influenced and even uh, the reindeers were drifting aimlessly, uh, attacked by wolves, and Sami were, uh, were drunk in their house. And so uh, he attacked priests and traders who uh, were using Sami, who were lying in their pockets uh, at the expense of others. And as a result, uh, he gained trust of Sami people. More and more Sami came to, uh, to, to the church. And so um, as a result, he created uh, a branch of Christianity, very radical, some would even say that um, fanatical, very severe religion. Lestedians, Lestedians. And Lestedians consider themselves now only true Christians, and uh, they reject all sins uh, of the outer world. And the sins are, according to Lestedians, dancing, television, uh, makeup, earrings, movies, tattoos, and cursing. And some reject uh, other um, ways of the, the modern world, like they don't buy insurance because it's a sin, and uh, they prohibit their children to participate in organized school sports, and uh, they're even removing their car radios. So uh, Lestedianus is quite um, radical and quite severe, as you can see. But in the past, in the 19th century, it really uh, helped Sami to, uh, to survive. 
houses and shelters. There are several types of um, traditional uh, Sami uh, shelters. There's Goati, um, with many names in many languages. It's a Sami hut uh, covered with fabric, timber, moss. And uh, it is a permanent, uh, permanent shelter. Another type of permanent shelter is Lavu. Uh, uh, shelter is Lavu, and Lavu is a traditional seasonal shelter, seasonal, seasonal dwelling. Uh, it is portable. It, it, it can be um, moved from one place uh, to another. It's constructed on wood, uh, reindeer guts. Um, and uh, it may be almost completely made of uh, reindeer products. And what's interesting that the interior was a very organized living space, but also it has a symbolic was a symbolic representation of uh, of cosmos in, tra in traditional level. Also, this could be. It's a mini camping van, more modern. It's the result of uh, the snowmobile revolution of 1960. Uh, it, is, uh, it is based on skis. It is powered by a snowmobile and it is a temporary, small but comfortable mobile shelter used uh, by some people practicing reindeer herding. So, uh, what do they do in their uh, spare time? and uh, what are their family relations. Family is very, very important to Sami people, and most Sami people can tell you their family history through many generations. Um, they're particularly attached to old family uh, photos and gather lots of them. Uh, it's very characteristic for them to know a lot about their ancestors. This is very, um, this is, this is very common. And uh, the most uh, common uh, surname uh, among Sami people is Lapalainen. Uh, as uh, they are very attached to their families, even, uh, for example, to a wedding, even 2,000 people might come to, to a wedding from all around and celebrate like for three days. There's also the famous annual Easter festival. Uh, which is one of the most important events uh, in Sami calendar, with reindeer races you can see here, um, Sami Grand Prix, Grand Prix, which is a music festival. Uh, it takes place, for example, in Copenhagen, in Norway, in New York, in Sweden, etc. Like I said, Easter Festival is a very special, very important uh, event. There's uh, reindeer sledge. And uh, last week, oh, they're very, they're, this is their um, characteristic sport, I would like to say national sport, last week. And they're um, like a championship during, uh, during this Easter e e event. Um, traditionally, people get engaged or married during uh, Easter season. Uh, which has something uh, for everyone. Also, some photos of uh, reindeer uh, racing and uh, lassoing. Uh, for lassoing, there is a world championship in lassoing, uh, generating as much passion, passion as uh, reindeer racing during uh, during Easter festival. As for cultural patrimony of uh, Sami people, the Cultural patrimony of the community of the nation, uh, even though Sami do not consider them uh, as an organized nation, um, are tales, but also music and, uh, and handcraft. Uh, many of Sami myths and legends, legends concern the underworld. Uh, some involve Stalos. Stalos is visible here. It's a race of troll like giants who ate humans, sucked out their strength to an iron pipe. And many tales involve Sami uh, conquering, outwitting uh, Stalos. There is a very uh, famous one, um, folk tale story of Pathfinder. Uh, there was a Sami village uh, uh, village attacked by a tribe, uh, by an external tribe, 
they fought as bad as they could, but they killed all but one, a young boy, and then the, the tribe forced the young boy to lead them to the next village so they can attack the, attack the village and overtake it as well. The boy agreed um, and was leading them through uh, by night through the mountains. Uh, and the top of the mountains, um, uh, the boy, uh, the boy asked them to follow him. He said he knows the mountains well. We'll, we'll lead them by the torch. Uh, suggested them to um, tie themselves together by a rope so no one gets lost. They agreed, uh, but uh, he, the bo Sammy boy, led them to a cliff, stopped, and uh, they followed him, uh, tied together, and fell over uh, the edge. So this is uh, one of the most. Uh, popular um, Sami legend. The music. Um, the music is uh, uh, the, the most specific part of uh, Sami music are the yoik. And Sami yoik is a song, but not entirely a song. It's something to, ho to honor someone or something. Um, it, it's not what you traditionally call a song, it's an expression of the essence of, of something. You can yoke a friend, you can yoke wind, you can yoke your family um, and more. It has no beginning, no end, usually no words, just a very special uh, melody. Um, also, as a part of cultural uh, patrimony, we can name um, handicraft. Uh, there's soft handicraft uh, and um, it's handicraft and, and soft handicraft. The first is made by men. Uh, they make knives, cups uh, with reindeer horns. But soft handicraft is traditionally for women. It consists of clothing, um, bracelets, and uh, jewelry and uh, baskets. As for clothing, like many other nations, uh, Sami uh, have their own colors. They are red green, blue, and yellow. And what characteristic? For example, uh, men wear a tunic like this. Uh, also, they wear boots. And Sami boots I, are filled with blister set. Blister set is a herb. And keep, that keeps your legs warm. Uh, and warm and then the latest developments of survival equipment you can buy. And uh, they are used uh, when the temperature drops below uh, minus 40 degrees and they work uh, perfectly. Uh, so, characters called colors. Also, you can see here something called a four wind uh, hat. Here's a, it's the photo of four wind uh, hat with four corners. Uh, so, the traditional costume uh, is uh, gakti. It's worn both on weddings, funerals, uh, festivities, but also during uh, during uh, every day. And this is, this is quite uh, quite beautiful, actually. On the left, we have Sami people in the late 19th century, uh, men and women. And on the right, we have a modern Sami bride with a remarkable handmade silver uh, embroidery and, of, uh, of course, wearing a traditional gown. Uh, I'm trained with uh, politics. Um, what is very interesting to me about Sami people is that they demonstrate how a people that is thousands of years old can be totally nonviolent culture. The sole exception that was, was that incident in Kautokeino, but it was performed by those converted to the strict Christianity. And uh, Sami never found themselves uh, captured by agriculture and all that it brings, territoriality, centralized power, uh, patriarchy, uh, and uh, desire to make war. And um, Tacitus, a uh, Roman uh, chronicle, wrote that Sami people seemed to want nothing else but their happiness. And I find it quite uh, beautiful. They never created a state system but they had a very well-organized society with Sida. Sida as a fundamental uh, unit. Sida was an area along the river, around the lake, along the fjord, and it was consisted of up to 12 families. They shared the area, 
uh, they had different living places for each seed. Uh, there was a seed council that decided uh, how the resources should be harvested to the year. year. It was a very democratic uh, system. And the core was the adaptation not to threaten the resources, not to threaten the nature, but to keep the, the relationship with nature balanced. So uh, about modern sunny politics, uh, monetary politics are mainly based on a sunny parliament uh, with very long uh, names, hard to, for me to pronounce. Uh, there are representative bodies uh, for uh, people of sunny heritage in Finland, in Sweden, in Norway, and there is also an ongoing attempt to create one sunny parliament in, uh, in Russia. Uh, the three Sami parliaments that exist, this uh, one of Finland, Sweden, and Norway, have a common political frame, play, framework called Sami Parliamentary Conference. Also, there is a Sami Council, and it is a non government organization. It is gathering twice a year and discussing the most important Sami issues like human rights, environment, environment protection, and uh, future development. So thank you very much.